welcome to Forbidden Planet TV, um, where I'm privileged to be joined by the supremely talented trio of Rory McConville, Declan Shelby and Joe Palmer to talk about the new Image comic book, um, Time Before Time. How are you, gents? How are you doing today? Good, good. It's all good, good, good. thank you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you feeling like you, I might have asked you this question before in in, in just very, very recent memory? Do you think that's possible? It's a possibility. <laughs> it's a possibility. Um, yeah. For those of you at home watching this, I've in fact done about 10 minutes of this interview without pressing the record button. So here we go. We're back into it now with the record button on. So, guys, before we get into talking about this great new book of yours, Time Before Time, how was it you actually came to meet for the first time? But I'm going to make the same joke again, but like I'm, I'm just meeting Joe now. Um, we, we, we've been talking on email and stuff, but we've never actually spoken in words or video form. So, so it's, it's nice to meet you, Joe. Yes, I did meet you once, Deck. It was, it was a long time ago. It was, it was, uh, I'm going to repeat the same story again. <laughs> but um, yeah, I met you back at, in, in probably 2013 at DICE convention. Um, so you've yeah, been to Ireland? You went to yes, yes, it was in Dublin, yeah. Um, it's weird because for my, my generation, um, it, there was nothing here. So, like, we had to go to the UK for anything, which is why Joe has abandoned his homeland. Sorry, not Joe, uh, Rory has abandoned his homeland. Yeah, pretty well, much. I, I was pretty much trying to get to every convention that I could get to, especially the ones that were, like, explicitly saying they were doing portfolio reviews. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was showing my stuff around. I was chatting to PJ Holden. And, and he told me to go and talk to you and shove my samples in front of you. So um, we had a brief couple of minute conversation. Was it any, out of curiosity, was it of any help? Uh, I can't remember, to be perfectly honest. I'm <laughs> sure, I'm sure it was. Do you know what it is? Because like, at, at that stage, it was just talking to any professionals were, was, was a super helpful experience. So Yeah, no, I, I know it's kind of tough now, like because um, there is no... I actually like doing portfolio reviews and talking to like people about their samples and stuff. And um, it's tough now because with no conventions, you don't get that kind of one on one, uh, you know, being able to kind of really look at somebody's work. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I feel I feel bad for like someone starting out now because it's very hard to really kind of get that uh, feedback. Because like I went to the UK, like, like you said, any show when I was starting out, I went to any show I could. I'd, I'd fly to the UK, Bristol or Birmingham or wherever and um just to get some feedback because it's the only way to really improve you know for sure yeah and to well it's just it's a very different experience being able to actually look into the person's eyes and and have a proper conversation rather than maybe one or two lines on the internet do you know what i mean yeah um, or when you're talking to pj have your soul slowly die oh no i didn't have that experience at all <laughs> i just kidding <laughs> pj was actually my first portfolio review oh ago. really okay uh, brilliant and, and Joe, was Declan civil to you when he was, re when he was reviewing your portfolio? Uh, as far as I remember, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think I've ever had a negative experience with a, with a portfolio review in terms of someone outright saying, you, you're rubbish, get out of it. It's, it's never been like that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely like a case where, when I was at that stage anyway, of being like politely told you're not quite there yet, here's what you can work on. Um, but it's always useful to get like specific pointers. I think that's the thing which is like really it's tricky for like newer guys is uh, is is knowing exactly what you should be you know working on. Yeah. And yeah, or knowing what you are like knowing what you are good at and knowing what you're not good at. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you get someone that that's uh, that's willing to to look up, yeah, look at it with with those kind of positive vibes, then yeah, it's definitely helpful. Rory, how did you get to meet Declan? Um, I don't actually. Do you remember? I I uh, don't. I, think I actually I'm... I actually don't know. I remember. I remember. I first heard of Rory because he had a comic. Um, I don't know if you remember what Zuda Comics. It was this digital initiative that DC Comics were doing years ago, and I saw this Irish name and I kind of looked it up and I saw he was from Ireland, and then I heard he was like sixteen or something. I was like, the little shit. it has got a DC comic. Um. But uh, I, I can't remember who we met, but you sent me some short stories over the years. And I remember... I, I remember I got onto you about when I was looking for someone for Big Jim and you re recommended Patty Lynch. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't yeah, know how we met by that point. Uh, I think we I think we might have met. We I had, think. Yeah. yeah, maybe just once. But it would be like a small convention or something where you just mm. said hello. Like, um, uh, it's, not like we're, it's not like we're good friends or anything. Anything but... <laughs> 
So how what was the genesis of Time Before Time? How did this book come about? Uh, well, we were, um, fun, funny enough, Thought Bubble is actually a big um, uh, reason kind of all kicked off because I, um, I, I was loving what Rory was writing and uh, I was kind of getting a bit frustrated that like uh, he wasn't breaking in in the US. And, um, you know, it's hard for writers. I, I think artists have a much faster trajectory once people see your stuff and they really respond to it, they get really excited, but it's really tough for writers to kind of break in. And I just remember thinking, I didn't have time to write something new, but I thought maybe if we wrote something together, it would get some eyeballs on him. Uh, and I'd be, I like making things, you know, uh, I, I like bringing, making something, forming it into existence. Um, I, I just like making, making stuff. And it seemed like a way that me and Rory could both kind of have a bit of fun where I'd get to write and he would maybe get some eyeballs on his stuff and it end up being this whole other thing. And then a friend of mine had been sitting with Joe uh, at a convention and he showed me his stuff afterwards. I was like, fuck, this guy's really good. Um, and I remember I, I suggested Joe to Rory for their uh, Writers in Blood book, but they'd actually already worked together. <laughs> so that was pointless. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Thought Bubble is responsible for me and Rory hooking up as well. Yeah. Like, um, both of us won the 2000 AD talent search like in 2015. Um, and we ended up doing our first job for 2000 AD together. Um, and subsequently did another one together. And I think it was after the second one, that's about the time Right in Blood was getting started. Um, if I remember correctly, I can't remember. Um, yeah, I think it was around because it was definitely a gap of a few years between that first one we did, if I remember right. Oh, for me, there was a massive gap in getting your way at work, for sure. Yeah. 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 Had, yeah, you been, yeah. had you been doing more 2018 stories at the time, Joe? Like, were you kept going? No, there? so total, I've only done three oh, really? uh, jobs for 2018. Um, so I did another Future Shock after that initial one with Rory. And then we, Rory and I did a tale from the Black Museum, which is like a like a one-off story set in the Judge Dredd universe. Um, but yeah, that's it. Oh, fuck that's, them that so. Was, it, that, that was literally <laughs> it. I tried like hell to get more work, but there just wasn't, there, there's very limited spots available. And, yeah, I mean, and, you know, for whatever reason. Already and it's, yeah, it's, it must be tough to, to keep breaking in there. But Rory, you seem fine. What's that about? Help Joe. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just so much better. Rory's just got the talent, that's all. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's the one with the talent. So, guys, how did Write It in Blood come about? Um, God, that is a good question. Let me think. I don't know. I suppose we... I kind of wanted to try and do... Because I've been doing a lot of uh, stuff for 2018 that was quite kind of dense. Kind of, you know, five or six page stories. And I wanted to kind of try and do something that was a bit bigger in scope and could kind of had a bit more time to, like, dig into characters and, like, have more... I don't know, expansive kind of pacing. Um, and again, was looking for a project to try and break into the US market with. And then was kind of developing the pitch and it was Deck again who suggested getting on to Joe about it and then reached out to him. And thankfully he said yes. I think we, we, we were working on Time Before Time first, right, Rory, if I recall. We, yeah, we were... Yeah, I, I don't know how far we'd gotten in, but it... Yeah, if, if I recall, and this is just off the top of my head, I think we were, we were going back and forth, but um, it was slow. And I think maybe we, we were talking to somebody else at the time to maybe draw it and uh, it was just going slow. So in the meantime, I think you just came, I think you came up with Writer Blood, just have something to yeah. do while waiting for that. And then it ended up happening first, which is mad. Uh, <laughs> that, that was the thing, because then Joe had finished Writer and Blood around the time where we realized it wasn't going to work with the, the previous artist. So it was kind of like, I remember, I remember like looking at Writer and Blood and going like, well, Joe and Chris and Hass are this great team. And, you know, I've been in comics three years and I see how plenty of teams just fall apart or someone's not reliable or someone's an arsehole. Um, it's generally me being the arsehole admittedly, but, uh, but the, the, there was such a, like, it was such a smooth experience seeing them work together, I was, I remember saying to Rory, like, well, why, why not just keep the band working then and see them do something new? And so it just kind of worked out timing wise. 
yeah, that's brilliant. Um, what Write It in Blood, by the way, everybody watching this is going to be able to order Write It in Blood uh, from the links attached to this video, in addition to Time Before Time. And and what can you tell us about the premise of Time Before Time? Um, yeah, so it's, oh God, now I'm totally blanking. It's kind of, well, we're, we're pitched it kind of as like Looper meets Saga. So it's yeah. kind of a low tech. As elevator pitch lines go, that was brilliant, by the way. I was particularly drawn to that. It was great. It's, it's ambitious. It's ambitious. Yeah, it's like, hmm, maybe a smash head comic would be a good yeah. <laughs> With another beloved movie. What, a, what, a, what a, an original idea on our part there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's kind of, yeah. So it's the basic premise is that in the future, in the year 2140, the world is not going particularly well. And there, is, there are crime gangs who, for the right price, will smuggle you back in time to another era. And our main character is called Tatsuo. He's a smuggler who's been working for the, the syndicate, which is one of these gangs for a number of years. And he and his friend, Oscar, another smuggler, have kind of decided they want to get out of this life. So they try to steal one of these time machines and things don't really go to plan. It's kind of our starting point. And uh, what it's, I, I almost kind of don't really want you boys to spoil the book any, any, any more beyond that point because the, uh, the journey of, uh, of, of you know, appreciating is what it's all about. The, um, what we have got at Forbidden Planet is yeah, on, on the links attached to this, uh, to this interview, we've got the pre-orders for the first three issues of, uh, of the book all with uh, covers by Declan and then all with alternate covers as well. And uh, both those alternate covers and, and your artwork, Joe, is just absolutely beautiful. It's a really great looking book. And, um, and I think I think from, from the pages that I've seen thus far, because the uh, guys at Image were good enough to hook me up with some PDFs, uh, I haven't read the whole thing, but I can't wait to read the whole thing. And you can order all of those covers and you can order Write It In Blood from the links attached to this video. So guys, before we go, have you got anything else that you want to mention about working on the project together? Or have you got any other books you'd like to recommend? <laughs> uh, no, no other books. Don't buy any other books. <laughs> no other <laughs> books. There are no other good books out there. Yeah. Uh, no, well, I, 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 one, I'd like to say thanks uh, to, um, it, it is tough when you're trying to kind of sell a new book because it's like, you don't want to, you don't want to say everything that happens in it. And what a nice, nice feedback we've gotten from say retailers and stuff is when you send them an issue they want to know what happens next which i think is a good sign that yeah. you know we have a good comic on our hands um but uh yeah i i'm 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 excited just to i, I just think we've kind of built something really cool and I, i'm i'm dying to kind of take off more with them um, uh with like uh, joe and rory it's just been it's just been a really really great experience doing this book so um i'm open with you to do lots lots more yeah. That's awesome. I think that experience is translating onto the pages as well, because I think you're coming up... Not into this conversation. Really no, no, not into the conversation, of course, but into the book itself, which is much the best way. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> All right, gents, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this has been Forbidden Planet TV. This has been Rory, Declan and Joe, and we've been talking about the epic Time Before Time, which, again, you can order from the links attached to this video, along with Write It in Blood as well. Thanks very much, guys. Much appreciated. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.